Hi everyone. So we're looking at the Thermo Scientific Talos F200X TM with STEM capabilities. And this is at Goethe University in Germany where I have my new job. And if you've used TMs before, you might notice this one looks a little different. It's very sleek and minimal. And that's because there's this housing unit around it. So the idea is we have a lot done to the room itself to make it very stable and not um, influenced by environmental conditions, but this is just another way to minimize um, any environmental factors that could reduce the quality of our data. So things like air flowing across the microscope, vibrations, uh, shaking it uh, on a very, very small scale, and slight temperature variations, all of those affect the quality of data on a TM. So this is just another barrier to reduce that. It also um, means that users can't touch things they're not supposed to touch necessarily. So, and if you do demos, it's a little bit safer. You can walk around and, and all of that. But we do wanna see the microscope, right? Because <laughs> that's what the tour is about. So I'll open the side of it so we can see the column and everything soon. But the idea is users come in and then they just load their sample and then they go back to the control room. So our control room is actually above us because <laughs> we're in the basement and the control room is on the ground floor. So most TMs that have a separate control room, the control room is right next door, but the, the setup with this building, this was what made the most sense. So the users will come in, they will load their sample into the holder um, and then the holder into the microscope here. So right now, this is a side entry port. We have a dummy in and the microscope is just sitting there. Another interesting thing that's probably gonna be very helpful is this little screen that guides you through the holder insertion and retraction. One of the most stressful things for new users about TM is this step, the, the inserting the holder and then retracting the holder because you can introduce air into the column if you don't do this correctly. And then you get all kinds of alarms and you're waiting several hours before you can use a microscope. So let's look at it though. Let's open this side here. And again, the users won't need to do this. The users won't need to come over here. So if you've used TM before, this is more what you're used to seeing, right? Um, maybe with a little bit more of a housing unit, but a lot of wires and components visible. So this might look spacious because I have the camera um, with a wide angle right now, so you can actually see a little bit better, but this is actually very confined. So this is our liquid nitrogen dewer, and I have my hand here for scale, so you can see it's very big. And the idea behind that is the lab manager, which is me, will fill this up once a week, keep it full, and then we run a um, cryocycle where we remove contamination that's built up in the column over the week. We remove it and then we start over again. So we're not gonna have users touching the liquid nitrogen, which is good in terms of safety for sure, because that is an area where people can, um, you know, burn themselves cryo from cryo burns. And it's, it's scary at first. So um, it's good practice for students if they're gonna keep doing electron microscopy, but you know, then hopefully they'll, they'll get that experience in other labs. This will be good for general users that just want higher uh, resolution imaging and EDS data from their geologic samples. So there's the column itself. And then you can see it kind of turns here and off to this part. But this big wire is our HT. It goes out and around to the HT tank over there. And then we have some pumps and our detectors and cameras and everything. They're all nestled in here, which for the engineers is probably a whole lot of fun to service. But those aren't things that I really have to deal with. Um, we're on a service contract for a couple of years, which is nice but I haven't had my applications training yet, so there's not much more I can tell you. Um, 
I've never used a Thermo Fisher TM before, so this is new for me. I've always used Joel TM one neon. So I'll let you know how, how that goes. One other thing I wanted to briefly mention is this room is enclosed. Um, we don't have uh, fresh air coming in. So, um, or the air can't come go out. I can't remember which way it is. But that means that potentially, because we are filling liquid nitrogen, we could be building up nitrogen levels in the room. And we keep this door shut because you can hear how loud it is. This is our water chiller and um, our backup power. So it's noisy and we don't want that noise affecting the microscope. We also don't want temperature fluctuations by keeping it open. So they installed earlier this week this oxygen detection system. And so it tells us the oxygen level. There's two of these, one, on, one here and one on the opposite side of the room. And if they get too low, there's this alarm that'll sound and the light will flash. There's also one out in the hallway. So if anybody's out there, they can also see that there's something wrong. And it'll, it'll uh, sound for different thresholds of, of oxygen. Um, so you won't hear it and immediately be suffocating. But we'll see how it goes. It's usually not an issue, but because it is confined, um, they did install that and I've learned that Germans uh, are very safety oriented. So it's not, not a bad thing to have that in place. All right, well, I'm gonna give you guys um, some video content of how to videos at some point. I've been really busy trying to acclimatize to the new job and, and country and everything. So sorry for not giving you more uh, useful videos, just a lab tour, cause it's easy for me to do, but hopefully within the next month or two, I can uh, give you a video. I have a lot of ideas for ones that I'd like to make. So take care. Bye.